Hi, my name is Ricardo Kohlberg. I'm one of the attending physicians at the Andrews Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. And today we're going to be performing a percutaneous needle fenestration and platelet-rich plasma injection to the um, common flexor tendon at the medial epicondyle. So we've prepared the patient in supine position with the arm in a flexion, abduction, external rotation position. Uh, we have the elbow at 90 degrees. Um, we've prepped and cleaned the medial aspect of the elbow in sterile fashion with betadine solution and isopropyl alcohol. We're using uh, sterile gloves and uh, we sterilized the uh, probe cover as well and using sterile gel. We have an ultrasound. We're going to be doing the procedure under ultrasound guidance to ensure we can find the pathology and perform the procedure uh, visualizing the pathology as we debris the tendon. So brief history on the, uh, on the case. Uh, this patient sustained an injury to the common flexor uh, tendon at the medial epicondyle. Uh, two years ago, uh, doing weightlifting. Um, there's been uh, five rounds of cortisone injections done by outside physicians, prescription anti-inflammatories, rest, strengthening exercises. And despite that, patient has not gotten significant improvement. Um, we performed a limited diagnostic ultrasound and noted that there were intrasubstance tears um, at the anthesis and at the proximal aspect of the tendon. And there's some uh, in some uh, intrasubstance calcifications that are noted in the uh, common flexor uh, tendon. So we can see these right in here. We have the dome-shaped structure, which is the medial epicondyle, the striated fibers that come out, which are um, the tendon from the medial epicondyle. And then it's probably a little hard to see, but there's, there's a white line that extends out from the medial epicondyle into the uh, tendon which are the calcifications. And then there's a small undersurface tear um, that can be seen with a hypoechoic signal, which is a black or dark signal um, in the undersurface of the tendon with a hyperechoic signal or white signal at the interface uh, with the bone. So um, we're going to proceed with uh, providing local anesthesia to the soft tissue. We use lidocaine 1%. For this procedure, we have to ensure that we know um, where, the where the ulnar nerve lies in relationship to the medial epicondyle. The ulnar nerve can, see, can be seen posterior to the medial epicondyle. The medial epicondyle is the dome-shaped structure, and the ulnar nerve sits right here. It looks like uh, it's described as great bundle. Uh, that's that small structure right in here. Um, and we're going to be working in this area of the tendon. So when we provide the numbing medication, we want to ensure that we stay in this area. It is important to inform the patient that they will probably feel paresthesia along the ulnar distribution, most noticeable in the first and in, in the sorry, in the ring finger and the pinky finger. In the ultrasound screen, we can visualize the needle, um, which is in the soft tissue in the top right corner of the screen. And we're injecting the uh, local anesthetic. It's I can see the peritinon, which is displacing and it's elevating away from the tendon. And that's ensuring me that I'm getting the anesthesia into the tendon where I want it to go. Now we do try to limit the amount of anesthesia that we put into the intersubstance part. So what we do is we go, we do one pass into the undersurface. This may bother you a little bit. Um, and then we go ahead and inject some numbing medication to the undersurface as well. Okay. So we injected uh, two milliliters of lidocaine 1%. Um, lidocaine onset of uh, uh, anesthesia takes um, on average, 30 seconds. So I typically wait 30 seconds, and then I proceed to uh, start doing the percutaneous needle fenestration. If the patient does feel uh, discomfort during the procedure, we may repeat a second round of numbing medication. So this is the uh, platelet-rich plasma product. 30 milliliters of uh, whole blood 
were obtained and processed uh, with an anticoagulant. And we obtained uh, five milliliters of uh, platelet-rich plasma concentrate. Um, and this is what we're going to be injecting into the tissue. So I use a 20 gauge needle in order to be able to uh, um, perform the the, uh, the debridement. You go. So we advance the needle there to the uh, site where we had the undersurface tear. We're just going to inject a little PRP. I'm actually seeing that a little bit of the PRP is extending into the uh, into the common uh, flexor mass which is commonly seen with uh, delaminating intersubstance tears. So this is the needle. Uh, we can see a hollow structure. Uh, that it's hyperechoic or, or white signal that is going into into the uh, common flexor mass. Something that's important when you're performing this procedure on the ultrasound guidance is to know that you're looking at a two-dimensional structure and that the pathology is in three dimensions. So what I do is I'm constantly moving the probe and tilting it and redirecting the needle superficial, deep, and proximal and distal, and medial and lateral, working the whole uh, tendon, ensuring that uh, we debris all of the pathology. Feel that little crunching. Those are the calcifications that we're getting out. We're done. So we um, ensure that uh, we achieve hemostasis in the area. It is important to uh, remember that uh, this is a, um, a procedure. It is a minimally invasive proce procedure, but still we are um, performing a, a procedure that debris the tendon and patient may experience uh, soreness or pain um, after the procedure. So we always make sure that we give the patient a pain medication. It is common to feel a little bit of uh, stiffness in the next two weeks. And uh, weakness can also be experienced. We have the patient start physical therapy one week out from the procedure working on gentle range of motion and gradually improving the range of motion to active assisted and eventually active range of motion. We also work with strengthening the adjacent areas and we'll eventually uh, proceed to strengthening the common flexor uh, mass at the medial epicondyle. We'll have the patient follow up at two weeks to ensure there were no major complications from the procedure. Thank you for your time.